Let's talk about making your own bubble. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, we are drinking organic red clover tea from the High Priestess boxes. I haven't been sponsored in a bit. They've been taking a break, but their boxes are coming back. They're the only people I work with right now, and they're fantastic. Again, not sponsored in this video, but I do love this company. The tea is delicious as per usual. Now, in today's video, we're just gonna jump into it. This is about making your own bubble, which is gonna make absolutely no sense if you are unfamiliar with my work or if you think of a bubble as a very specific concept. Example, someone in my life recently came to me and said, Brittany, I don't like the way you use the word bubble because bubble is like when you have a blinder on, right? And I was like, well, it depends on how you see it. For some people, a bubble can be a blinder. For some of us though, a bubble is just a lifestyle choice, a way to think about the world, or maybe even like a belief system you can cling on to. Some say we are more divided as a country than ever before. According to a recent PRRI study, 91% of Americans believe that America is divided over politics. Now, one theory for this is that some of us live in a political bubble or an echo chamber where most of our friends and family have similar views and exposure to different ideas is rare. The study also says less than half of respondents see political diversity in their friend groups and only 39% said that they see political diversity in their family. So we wanted to know where you fall in this. When thinking about your close friends and family members, is everyone strictly a Republican, a Democrat, or is there a mix? So depending on how you view bubble, we're gonna have different ideas of what I'm talking about today. But in general, to sum it up, my idea of a bubble is a way of being, a way of believing, a uh, Almost like a, ooh, this is actually really hard to explain. It's only hard to explain because I would have to like sit down and really give you examples, but I guess I can give you some. Uh, let's say you're thinking about the macro, right? The macro bubble. What What is that? Well, I'm going to say it's the universe, space and planets and constellations. I'm going to say this expanding universe, this understanding of of what we live in, what we're floating in on a, as a planet, that is sort of the macro of bubbles. That is the bubble, right? That's like the biggest one. And then inside of this big, big bubble, there's like maybe, uh, let's say countries and let's say cities and then let's say uh, towns and then let's even say like schools, work, church, and then your family dynamics. All of these things are bubbles. They hold lifestyles, belief systems, ideas about what the self is or what the consciousness is, even if it's subtle, like the nature bubble. I guess if you could pop back out and you thought about a bubble as like the universe being the macro bubble, well, within the universe, there's like planets. If I was hanging out on Mars, would that be a different bubble than Venus? The other example I like to use about bubbles to kind of make it a little bit more clear is like animals. I always say like, you know, bears are bears, brown bears are brown bears, and polar bears are polar bears. But they're living in different bubbles, even though they're bears. Like, does that make sense? Like, yes, they're both bears, but because they're having different life experiences as bears, they don't live in the same bubble. Like, imagine if a brown bear and a polar bear could have a conversation and the polar bear is like, yeah, like I hang out in the snow all day. And the brown bear is like, really? Like, I like to climb trees. They're different kinds of experiences. And yet they're both bears. So when we look at humans and we think, oh, all humans are the same. We're all the same. Yes. On some level, we're all the same. We eat and we poop and we shower, hopefully. We have moments in our life that are similar. We fall in love, we fall out of love, maybe we've been hurt. Yes, all these things are universal experiences for the most part. But within those universal experiences, there's even something more uh, specific. Let's say a religion or a lifestyle. Maybe you're really vegan. Cool, what kind of vegan are you? Maybe you're Muslim. What kind of Muslim are you? Oh, so you're Catholic. Great, what does that mean to you? Oh, you're gay. What kind of a gay are you? No matter who you are or what bubble or group or whatever you fall into, there's a different way of being for each one. Oh, you're goth? Cool. Which kind? And no matter who you are, you're in a bubble, even if you're enlightened. I think enlightenment is a bubble of its own, right? I think hanging out on my Discord is a bubble of its own. I think being on this YouTube channel is a bubble of its own. I think when you and I do a one-on-one -on -one call and we have that one-on-one -on -one moment, we're in a bubble because we're creating a reality to share or or exist around. So a singular person can curate a bubble in my belief. And I think that you can, example, hop into other people's bubbles. Let's say I decide to go camping in the wilderness. I'm hopping into the wilderness bubble and I'm having a relationship with me in nature. Maybe a bear eats me, right? And then all of a sudden I'm in that bear's bubble and that bear and I are interacting. And even though it's, you know what I mean? It's just me and him. You know, maybe people are viewing it. Maybe people are interacting with it. Maybe other animals are watching. They're all in like this moment of time, this like bubble together. 
And then, of course, maybe I survive and I go back to the country or I guess the city. Let's say I leave the bear forest and all of a sudden I'm back in my real life. Well, what bubble am I in? Am I in there? Maybe I'm uh, now maybe I lost a leg to this bear. Ooh, now I'm going to join the disabled bubble. And now I'm in a bubble in which everyone surrounding me has some insight and wisdom to share about what it's like to be newly disabled. And what does that look like? Oh, well, Brittany actually back in May got diagnosed with lupus. I'm in the chronic health bubble now. That was a new bubble, actually that I didn't and wasn't a part of. I didn't think about it. I wasn't a part of it. And now I am so aware of how many people in my audience have chronic illnesses. And I'm now looking up videos for support groups. So I'm about to join a new bubble, even though I knew it existed. I was never in it. Example, I'm about to move to Europe. I'm hopping out of the American bubble and into the European bubble. And again, as an American, I can fantasize about what it's like to live there, but I will not know until I am physically in Europe, right? I will not know what it is to be Europe, European, Europe. I I will not know what it's like to be European. And even then I won't even know because I'll be visiting the bubble and learning what it's like to live in Europe as an American, but I won't really know what it's like to be European. I know a lot of people are upset that I'm not specifying the country I'm going to yet, but I will. So when I say I'm going to be Euro Brittany, I'm really just going to have access to the country I'm really going to. And then, of course, hopefully we'll travel around as we're there. But I'm going to be bubble hopping with the intentionality of really understanding the humans I'm about to interact with. How are you different from me? How are you similar to me? Um, What do we have in common? What can you teach me? What tool can you give me? Right. I'm definitely going to seek out wisdom now. These are all different types and ways to have bubbles. But then what happens when you want to make your own and what does it even mean to make your own? So I believe we are existing. There's like us, we are existing. And I think everything outside of us is existence, right? So if you're new to my channel, I am your existence because you are existing and you are watching me and I'm interacting with you in some weird parasocial way because it's that camera. But we're having an an interaction which forces you to think differently or maybe similarly or maybe you're viewing me and thinking like, I've never heard this girl. The other day I blew DGG's mind, Destiny's viewers, because I said nudist family event and that just like, did, they didn't know what to do, right? Because in that moment, they were interacting with a Britney that had a lifestyle and an experience they hadn't had and could not fathom, and it blew their minds. So every time you're interacting with somebody, it's an opportunity to gain a tool or to just have a good time, right? It doesn't matter. But how do you make a bubble of your own? Well, you can start by going from third person thinking to first person thinking. Third person is Susan went to the store and now she's at work. Your life is not a narration, though you can make it one. You are a first person character. You are, I've decided to go to the store today, bitch. Okay, this is your time to shine. So when you're making your own bubble, you first have to have the skill of knowing yourself, which is a very hard skill. This is a very hard skill to know yourself, to have relationships with yourself that forces you to see past your issues and forces you to face yourself and really admit who you are. I am obsessed with all these like rich people shows on Netflix and I'm watching the new one in New York, like the Bling show in New York. And these people are being recorded. They are so unaware and yet so aware of their flaws and the issues they have. But you should see some of these tropes, the way these archetypes are interacting with each other. It's kind of amazing, like the mean girl and then the like the salesman and like all these different, the pushover, the all these different people are interacting and they're like, yeah, you're doing this and you're doing this they're in a bubble of wealth of Asian because it's Asian wealthy people so I'm in I'm getting to see as a viewer this bubble of like richness and Asianness, whatever that means and New Yorkness whatever that means and all of these things and people are so people no matter if they're really wealthy or not right which is why when Sneeko my son Sneeko who's so sweet so lovely so introspective when he goes like these billionaire satanists are like hurting us or taking over guys billionaire satanists are people too and if your bubble was one where you had to be wealthy and just make more wealth they're playing the game correctly you have to decide what bubble are you in and what game are you playing are you trying to get Bugattis are you trying to get an education are you trying to be the best president are you trying to be who are you trying to be the best priest the best what what are you trying to be you have to decide so when you're choosing a bubble which we talked about a few weeks ago on the podcast you're picking a pre a uh, curated bubble, let's say like, oh, the religious bubble, great, which religion? And then you pick the religious bubbles. They're set for you. People are already running those bubbles. And if you go and choose a job bubble, let's say you're like, okay, well, where do I want to work? What kind of bubble do I want to exist in? Do I want to go to work at Starbucks every day? Do I want to go to work at an office every day? For me, oh my God, I would rather work a nanny job, a Starbucks job, a Walmart job before I ever work an office job. But at the same time, do I want to skip the office job and go into like the fashion office job? Yeah, kind of. Am I going to? No, because Brittany is a philosophy nerd. Overall, I'd rather sit 
Wow. <laughs> I'd rather sit and read all these books. I'd rather nerd out at a library. And that's where my heart is. That's the bubble that I love to work in. So I really worked my ass off for 12 years to make this a real job. Okay. And so I could read all the time and I could nerd out all the time. I had to pick and choose what bubble did I want for work. You get to do that too. Now, in your life, you're not always at this point in your life where you really can be first person. Sometimes you're very third person. My life is happening to me. But eventually, you're going to happen to life. So if you're at the stage in your life where you are, are still letting life happen to you, and though that will technically always happen in a macro way, right? Like if you look at the countries, you're not really going to have a say in how the U.S. government or the Russian government or Ukraine or any of these places has a relationship with the citizens and you. So like, let's say your countries go to war together. Well, you're in war now, right? You don't have control over that. You only have control over what you do with your body and your consciousness. So when I say you're going to be more first person, you're going to happen to life, please be wise enough to consider. Obviously, there are things outside of our control. There's just not as many as we think there are. And I think depending on your bubble, you're probably told you have a lot less control than you do. And that's fine if you internalize that and believe it and you want to spend your one life thinking that way. I'm just offering another suggestion. So let's say you get into the point in your life where, okay, you kind of figured out your job and your relationships and everything else, or maybe you haven't, but you're open to changing. Well, you have to examine what do you want and why. That will tell you how to get and curate your bubble. So again, when I formed my bubble, I was thinking, okay, well, well, how do I want to do this? How, what does that mean to form my bubble? I had requirements. One, I had to be able to be every kind of Britney at once. So I needed to be able to be myself. I didn't. I wanted to be my bubbly self and then my more serious self and then my angry self and then my Middle Eastern ass, like sassy self. I wanted to be all of myself at once without having to warn people because I've noticed that when people are like singularly faceted, uh, faceted which I don't think many people are, I think they only have like one like one personality. So they think um, like, oh, I can't keep up with Brittany. She's like talks too fast. She switches on and off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. But because of who I am and how I talk, like that's just how it's going to go. OK, so I need to be able to not mask or be other uh, othered in my own bubble. So what requirement number one to create my own bubble is I had to make a space where I could be all of my Britney's at once. So I curate my space sort of like in my home, which is why I'm very, very protective of my house because it feels like my space. So first and foremost, be myself. That's number one. And that goes, um, uh, you know, from anything from eating whatever I want to making noise to dressing how I want to talking how I want. No censorship without anyone like canceling me or reporting me or claiming their religion is offended. You know, I come from a really religious background. So it's important that my bubble allows me to be my very not religious self, you feel? Okay. Now, again, I'm curating bubble around myself because I, when I did this, I was a single person and I knew that I would be very lucky if I was able to meet a partner in the future. And I didn't know if that was going to happen. And of course, you guys know that did happen and I'm engaged and I'm getting married. But I created this bubble for myself and I needed to find someone that wouldn't pop the bubble, but that would bring their bubble into mine and we create a bigger one. So I needed to be myself. I needed to know that when we discussed what is real, we were going to discuss what was real, even if we felt differently. So I, when I'm facing myself and I'm really challenging myself, I'm really asking myself, what evidence do you have to believe this thing? And then what evidence do you have to know something? What does it mean to know something and believe something? So in my personal bubble, when I'm facing myself, I want to be open, raw, and honest. I want it to be a truly safe space for me to say everything that's in my head and to not feel ashamed, not to feel guilty, and to explore it, dissect it, and come to some sort of solution of where to place it in my mind. So when I explore the consciousness, everything is centered around philosophy and meditation and knowing myself and my values. So values are number one. You're asking yourself, what existence, what home do I want to come into when I leave work that's so crazy or I leave school where I'm masking so hard? What kind of environment do I want to come home to? I want to come home to an in 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 introspective one. Like I know that sounds exhausting. I know for some people they absolutely hated dating me because I would come home from work and then I would still want to talk about philosophy. What does it mean to be a person? What is the consciousness? And that's exhausting. But for me, that is my happy place. So I need a bubble in which I'm allowed to be asking myself these questions. I'm allowed to be exploring. 
growing up in the home I did, which was lovely in some ways, but horrific in others, if you brought home a book that was anti the religion or anti the values of the home, you would get in trouble. So in my bubble, in my environment, I want to make sure that every book is allowed. We can have discussions about everything. Now, of course, there's going to be some topics that might make me uncomfortable, but why am I uncomfortable is a great opportunity for introspection, right? I like my life to challenge me, but I also want it to be peaceful. So one of the main requirements I needed, right, was to curate an environment that allowed all things to be explored, even when we're uncomfortable. But yes, create a safe space, if that's the word you want to use, to make sure that when I'm not in the mood, I don't have to do it, right? Like the world already puts so much pressure on us to face people we don't want to face or deal with problems at work we don't want to deal with. And so at home, I'd like to not have to do it. But if I need to be disciplined, if I have to face myself, my bubble better reinforce my butt into action. So I also want to make sure that even though I'm going to be lenient on myself and tell myself, girl, you have one life. You don't have to do this right now. There's also one part of me that's like, take your time, but do it now. Take your time, but do it now. Right. So I want to make sure that my bubble is some a space that allows me leniency, but also holds me accountable to get stuff done because no one's going to do it for me. I believe we're living on a planet, probably evolved animals over time, and we're all living within bubbles, all of us, no matter how introspective you are, even if you've deleted all the bubbles from your head, even though even if you've popped everything, you still go home to someone, usually yourself. Who are you going home to? What is the environment you've curated for just you and yourself, right? And again, for me, it's about being comfortable, introspective, challenged, and leniency. Allow my space to be all the Britneys. Sometimes I need to be babied and sometimes I need my butt kicked, right? So when you're curating your own bubble, when you're creating it, it might feel like you're pushing people away or alienating people from your life. And you kind of are. It's like when you know, like, your, let's say your mom knows guests are coming over and you're like quickly cleaning the house to make sure it's good for guests, okay? You're making this space good for you. You're literally cleaning the space for you. And because you're doing this, you are saying to other people, yes, you can come to my house and visit my bubble, but I might not be able to explain it to you or act like I do when you're in my bubble. I'll explain. So as you guys know, I'm getting married and I'm very excited to marry this man. I'm very excited to start our life together. One of the things that I majorly require, like like required so hard that if he was perfect in every way, but not in this way, I wouldn't have married him, was a requirement of our bubbles meshing together properly. So many times I've dated really nice people or known really great people, but when our bubbles come together, we just end up to like becoming the worst versions of ourselves. We really aren't the best versions, you know, and I'm really striving for some sort of like peace here. So I really need somebody whose bubble meshes with mine and creates an environment where we can be ourselves. And my partner is genuinely like, I'm so glad we chose each other. I'm glad we found each other now at this time in our lives. I think this is like our perfect timing and I do believe in timing. So I had created this bubble. I had been very strict about my limitations and boundaries. And he was the only person who truly made it to a second date, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and now marriage. And I'm stoked about that. I have meditated on this. I have hoped for this. I have prayed for this or manifested this, whatever language you want to use. I have held out for the person that would help me make my bubble more of a home and bring our bubbles together rather than somebody who either didn't want me in their bubble, somebody who wasn't open and vulnerable with me. I didn't want somebody who was going to mock me for my like work and would understand my work. Look, my work is really fun and nothing really matters because we're all going to die, but it matters to me. Because I think I'm doing something that really helps people, even if you're neurotypical or not neurotypical, if you like philosophy or don't, if you are sitting here pondering your life and wondering, like, who am I and what's the point? This is the point. This is the point. You are the point. I am the point. Living our lives is the point. If nothing matters and there is no God, what a better opportunity. Like, what better opportunity than to embrace love and have fun and enjoy life and not murder, kill, or rape, or steal from people? If we could like get those things down, I'm sure the world would be a more lovely place. But because I believe the world is chaotic because of free will and choice, I'm not here to create a bubble that limits other people. It's just a boundary for myself. So again, I can cast judgment on how other people live their lives. But really, unless it interacts with my bubble, I don't really mind what you're doing with yours. Because I understand that you, like me, are just trying to live your best life. You're trying to be happy. So when you're making a bubble, it's really not about other people. You really got to think about what you want. So don't feel pressured, right? So even the way I decorate my home, which is my safe space, 
uh, now that I'm getting married, we get to have conversations about, hey, are we going to be one of those couples that when people visit, do we hide our like our BDSM nude art or do we keep it out in the open for people to see? I I can't wait to have those conversations as we grow as a couple that lives together because those things will change when we do that. But as we go along, the one thing my partner and I are thinking is how do we make our bubbles work? We are aware that we've both lived very different lives, him European, me American, um, him a man, me a woman. We've lived very different lives. And so we owe it to each other to be open and transparent while building our bubbles together. So again, he'll have his own input. But for me and and what I need for my peace is knowing that I can do whatever I want that makes sense for our health and happiness and joy. And within limits and boundaries of my partner's feelings and my own, we will curate and contain a bubble and, and keep it going, like keep a bubble going that makes sense for our lives in the moment that we're living it. So your bubble can transform. That's what I'm trying to say. Your bubble can transform. So first you create the solidified initial bubble. That's the one with your own self, like your single self. Then you create a bubble that changes over time if new people come into your life. But let me tell you this, other than a romantic partner, and this is just how my brain works, might not be how your brain works. Unless it is someone other than my partner, I do not actually change my bubble for other people, nor do I invite people into it in a real way, like 100%. So when my sister comes to visit, who I love so much, and we get along so well, We don't, like she has her own bubble and I have mine. We don't try to make a a new one together. We just scrap ours and curate a brand new one together. Does that make sense? I'm sorry, I said that weird. When she comes over, it's not like her bubble and my bubble are trying to make a bubble. It's more like we throw out our bubbles and try to make a bubble with each other. Because again, just like when I do one-on-one calls with you guys, we can't ask each other to mesh our bubbles. It wouldn't make sense. Instead, we should create a new one. So let's give a little bit of a weird example. Let's say um, let's say I'm a homosexual, which I am, and you are a religious person. And when we come together, your religion, for some reason, says gay people are bad. Okay. Well, in this moment, it would be very silly for me to push my gay bubble and your religious bubble together to make a religious gay bubble. That's silly. So why don't we instead throw out our bubbles and together curate a space where we can just be people together regardless of your religion and my orientation. That is a skill. Not everyone can do it, but I've met plenty of amazing people that could. Most people, most strangers in the world, we do this on a daily basis and we don't even know it. We do it at the grocery stores. We do it at our banks. We do it at work. We all live in different bubbles and yet we all kind of manage to get along until we don't, which is why it's very important that when you're looking at your macro micro bubbles, like let's say your countries, you're choosing one that helps you flourish. Your cities, states, you're choosing ones that make you flourish. Your provinces, you're choosing ones that make you flourish, right? You're choosing a bubble versus creating a bubble. So creating a bubble is about the space you go home to or the space you meditate in or maybe even disassociate to a little bit. Shh, don't do that. Um, when you're in a crowd of people, sometimes I'll find myself like in a different bubble than my comfort comfort zone. So let's say, um, oh, I went to Miami. I saw ABBA and Destiny and Melina and, you know, we all had so much fun. And here's Steven, ABBA and Melina and I at the skating rink. I'm in a different bubble. I'm visiting this bubble. I'm I'm uh, doing something I'm not so confident about, but having fun doing. I totally ate it on these skates, bros. I totally rolled and totally fell on my butt during the skating rink. But what a fun experience to leave my comfort zone, to leave my bubble, hop into a different one. And then I got to see the skill levels. Like you could tell who spent a lot of time in this bubble, right? It's not just a hobby. It's a lifestyle. Even the people there, they walk different. They drink different. Like the way they hold their cups and they skate, even though they shouldn't be doing that. That's like a flow. That's like an energy. That's almost saying, that's even like a signaling of like, I'm so skilled as a skater. I feel comfortable with an open drink. And sometimes it's foolish, but you know what I'm saying? Like, There's like, um, if you go into the royal family bubble, there's like the way people drink tea and the way that people speak that tells you like, ooh, how much they're playing this game, right? Every bubble that you jump into, there's different sets of rules. So the rules you set for your bubble should reflect your values. So I have rules in my bubble, right? And there's values associated with those rules. So my partner and I together created a bubble and we're still working on it together, right? Because we have yet to live with each other. We're going to, it's going to change. But right now in our bubble, uh, one of our favorite examples to use or my favorite example to use when distinguishing it is like in this bubble, if either of us cheated on each other, it would be a big deal and we would probably have to separate or break up. 
right? In some people's bubbles, this is not a defining factor of separating the bubbles. For some people, cheating is a bad moment in time that they get through no matter what. You know how people say in sickness and in health? For some people, cheating is a part of the sickness, so they stay. But for my partner and I, if either of us cheated outside of a medical problem or a mania episode or truly like, you know, if I, we just cheated intentionally, well, there's really no excuse for that because we made a bubble that was so honest and open and raw because we have a relationship where he can express attraction to other people. I can express attraction to other people. We're allowed to say someone is attractive whilst knowing that we've chosen to be monogamous because we create a space where we're supposed to communicate. Hopefully neither of us will ever cheat. But if that were to happen, we know it's the end of the relationship because neither of us are emotionally open to being with somebody that would be willing to do that to us on purpose like that is a very like that's the ask we're making of each other and so if one of us did it well that would be basically pretty cruel right it'd be cruel and I don't think you should stay married to somebody who's willing to be so cruel to you right if you want to that's up to you it's your bubble you are in charge of your bubble you get to decide if the person or people in your bubble get to do X, Y, or Z to you. So in my bubble, my family knows like, hey, I love you. But in my bubble, I don't have to get religiously married nor baptize my kids. So I'm not going to. But this is what I need for me to be happy, sane, safe, consensual, all those lovely things. So again, when you're curating your bubble, you're asking yourself, what is my actual belief? What reality do I live in? What's my sense of peace? The reason I like solitude is because I've only ever found one person that really could be in my bubble with me and slash merge their bubble with mine. So for me, being with just that one person is pretty satisfactory. It's not perfect. I'll miss my friends. I want to talk to you guys. I love you. I love my audience. I love my discord. I love this online bubble. But ultimately, there's nothing greater than feeling so seen and there's nothing greater than being loved to Brittany. So of course, my favorite, my favorite place to be is my own bubble because I've curated it to be completely just like the perfect space for me and all of existence around the whole world. My favorite space is when I'm with myself and or with my partner. And I worked my whole life to make that possible. Right. In my 20s, I didn't always love being alone with myself and I would constantly go out, have tons of friends. I was out every weekend. I've done crazier things than half the world. But I ultimately have come to home to a very isolated life, which for me is good because, again, I'm chronically online right now. I basically never leave my house. It's snow season. I'm not leaving my house in the snow, girls. But when I move to Europe, it won't be snow. It will be nicer weather and there will be opportunities to go out more and still an isolated way. So in a way that says I'm hopping into this bubble and enjoying this like cafe in the morning, but I'm ultimately going to come home to my bubble all the same. So, again, you're you're trying to aim for your joy. You're trying to say to yourself, OK, look. The world is weird. Basically, everything's a construct and not just like in the progressive way. I mean, literally the way we bank, the way we do money, the way we do religion, everything is curated by people. We created it. They created those bubbles as much as you're creating yours. Do not let them convince you that you're not allowed to live the life you want just because they they have decided that they've been around longer. Again, if you're not living for society, if you're just trying to be a basically good community member, you're not going to rape, steal or like fuck anyone over in a real way, then the best thing you can do after that is focus on your joy. Come home to your like what you think is love. Come home to your home. Come home to your baked goods. Come home to your children, your wife, your husband, your they, whatever. Come home to your partner. Love your life or don't come home to yourself. But either way, you have one life and then you're going to die. So yes, nothing matters because on the grand scheme of things, we're just like energy floating in a new universe and a a rock floating through space. And we're all going to die probably from resource shortage or I don't know, just a nuclear war. But it does matter because you're living your life. My life matters to me and I hope your life matters to you. And I hope that you can respect the fact that I am you and you are me in the same sense that we could have been each other. You know, we just ended up us. We're like, Our parents had sex and then they had us as babies and we ended up where we are. We look the way we do and we think the way we do just because of the way it all went, right? And then when you have more of a grasp on who you are by asking yourself, who am I? You start to create a preference, a true personhood, a true relationship with your consciousness. And then the next step after that, I feel, is always what joy do I come home to? You come home to the bubble you've created for yourself. 
So again, when you're thinking about your life, let's say, okay, this is my favorite example. Years and years ago, I made a video talking about, um, I was renting a room at the time. I was oh, so, so mentally ill, but I was, I was making a video. I made a video about um, paintings and I said, look, when you buy a painting and you think to yourself, oh, I wish this was my life. When you watch an anime and you're like, oh, I wish this was my life. Okay. Unless you are truly in one of the most horrific situations of your whole existence, under lock and key, trapped in a basement, trapped in some sort of bubble where you are literally unable to get away, most of us living in the world have access to some change. Most of us, even if we're poor, even if we're sick, I've been there, I get it, even though we do have moments of opportunity, but when you're ready, take your time, but do it now, you can take advantage of that opportunity, right? And you get to know yourself and your preferences. You can actually ask yourself, what do I want? Again, you want to get to the point where you go from being third person in your life, oh, Susan did this today, to I'm going to choose to do this today. But that takes a t that's a tool you have to get first before making your own bubble. So that's why it's so hard is I'm asking you to do the thing that is very difficult since most people are just surviving. And I used to be that way too, right? I was just surviving, just surviving, just surviving, just trying to get through today. And sometimes that's going to happen again in different ways. But throughout life, there comes a moment where you stop doing that and you start living your life. But to live your life, you have to really need it, not want it, need it. Same with curating a bubble. Not everyone needs that. Most people are quite happy with the prescripts we're given, which is great and good. I have no problem with people being born into a bubble and staying in the bubble. I have no problem with Farm Brother being born Catholic and staying Catholic. Khadija and FD signature signifier, signifier. Sorry, his name is so hard for my dislike. It's too hard. But um, they both used the word box recently in a video. And I thought that was kind of interesting where they both said people are in boxes. You know, we all have a box. We all have a cage. The bullshit the right tries to say. It's not real, but it kind of is. Outside of our box, our community, or any given box or community on social media or outside of social media, rich people, people with power, or people who have no shame or no accountability to a community can do whatever the fuck they want. People like Elon Musk, Dave Chappelle, JK Rowling, Nicki Minaj, they don't care about cancel culture because to them, this shit doesn't exist. They have no idea who we are or what we're talking about. They're insulated by both fame and resources and money to make your mean tweet about them kind of mean nothing. We don't have the power to hold any of those people accountable for their behavior. So we tweet about it. We might protest or strike or boycott or try to create some type of movement around our outrage. And maybe that does sway public perception at some point. And that does sometimes result in, you know, something happening. Maybe people get deplatformed or lose out on opportunities. But at the end of the day, many of those people, those rich and powerful people are untouchable, especially if they're good at what they do. Because the reality is you're only as canceled as your next project. Traits, or maybe it's just a coincidence. It's like the Myers-Briggs. Yeah, Some amen, people subscribe girl. to that and others don't. Exactly, girl. Amen. All of these different things are ways that we try to figure out and become who we are or learn ourselves. I totally. Think. Sometimes totally, it's easier totally. to have a neatly checked off box of, oh, I'm a dude. So dudes like this, <laughs> dudes do this, dudes blah, blah, blah. To so my observation, don't do much because they're just very general. And it helps more so others that are trying to perceive you and understand you, paint a picture of you based off what they know of what a man is versus what a woman is. And when they see someone that lives outside of that socialization or chooses to be outside of that socialization, it's Bubble. a lot of figuring out, a lot of trying to understand totally. or not understanding and being ignorant and scared and like, no, we don't want this, this is dangerous. I'm saying is baby, we all in cages. You in a cage too. I'm just choosing to decorate mine a certain way. Okay, get into it. That's a bubble girl. Good for you, girl, to know it. Like men are from but I don't like, um, cage can be both positive and negative. I am a BDSMer, so cages are also wonderful, especially when they have cute little mats inside and water bowl. But in general, um, I don't see my life as a cage anymore. I think that's the one advantage I have in my introspection journey is my life is not a cage anymore. It is a curated, respectable bubble that I've made for myself. 
and I like it and I like my bubble. I think cage has a little bit of a negative connotation for my brain in the way that she's saying it. But I, I don't like the idea that we're all in cages. I like the idea that we're all in realities or bubbles that make us feel the most seen and comfortable and that's okay. They're not to me providing actual solutions of what a free, liberated, loving, connective, partnered model of a relationship could be. Okay. Not everybody wants that though. This is so important and this is what I'm saying. I have learned by bubble hopping that people don't want what you want. You think people are ignorant and you think that, oh, they just don't know. They don't want it. They don't fucking want it. So when you go there and you're like, they just don't know, they're ignorant, you're, you're missing the plot. They just don't want it. Don't you understand, Habibi, when people look at you and they go, oh, if she only knew, if they only knew, if they, oh, I'm sorry, is Khadija a they? Right, Khadija is a they, she or just a they? I'm so sorry, I don't even know, I don't know these. But like, okay, so like, what if they just look at you, Khadija, and say, oh, if, if they only knew, oh, if they, oh, she's so trapped, if they only knew. Do you know what I'm saying? I hear that from my mother all the time, Betsy. You're so lost if you only knew, if you only knew, if you only knew the love of Christ. It's like, yeah, 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 I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. But that's what I'm saying. Radical acceptance, maybe people know and they just want this life. Or maybe they don't know, but it doesn't matter because they only know what they want to know. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm just not convinced that joy can't be found in the case. But the problem is, is like, I think we all have a bubble and bubbles are flexible and they pop and they change and they form new bubbles. I think bubbles are really lovely and you can bounce from one to another. I don't think they have to be cages. I think people choose whether or not they are, though sometimes existence will happen to your existing. So like I said, let's say you're uh, Ukraine and Russia right now. Well, you know, it's not going to be very easy for those citizens to have the same options that I would in America, right? My country isn't at technical war, right? Not in the same way. So again, yes, existence will happen to your existing. So you do have to play the game, whatever you want to call it, the game of life, the game of your bubble, the game of politics, the game of religion, whatever your obstacle is, you have to get yourself to remove the obstacle and and in order to get to the position where you can think, what do I really want? What do I really need? And again, I think things have to be needs a lot of the time because otherwise, like, you know, I wanted $25 million. I don't need it, girl. So I'm probably not going to make it. Okay, let's be real. Unless I needed something, it's just a want, right? So if you need to make your own bubble and you don't want to hop into someone else's, you have to need it. Otherwise, it's just like a dream. Look, and don't get me wrong. A lot of y'all are dreamers. A lot. I'm a dreamer. We're all dreamers. We all daydream. Oh, I want this and this and this. But do we? Right? And then what is the difference from a want and a need? So again, ask yourself all these questions. Why do you even want a bubble? Like, why do you want to make your own bubble? Why not just hop into a pre-scripted one? They're great. Join a nerd bubble. They're awesome. Join like a gamer bubble. They're great. Join a feminist bubble. They're great. Join a conservative bubble. Awesome. Like join a bubble that is already made for you. Join, the, you can do whatever you want. Pick a bubble that ma like that um, encourages your joy. But if you find yourself not satisfied, not being 100% yourself, make a bubble at home for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Curate your own bubble. But it's got to be a need. Otherwise, ugh, we're all just dreamers trying to figure out, like, what perfect world do I want, right? Okay. Your values have to coincide with these, like, bubbles, right? So when you visit a bubble, let's say you go to a family gathering and someone's there talking about how much they hate LGBT people. And you're an LGBT person. Well, right now you're in their bubble. I don't know how your family works, but in mine, you don't, you don't correct the elders. You can argue respectively, but you don't correct older people. Okay. So maybe in my bubble, I'm sitting there and like my mom says something that makes me like, like, why would you say that? You know, you have three queer kids, you know, I could pick a bubble, I could pick a fight with my mom and her bubble right there and then, or I could just like not, not everything's personal, but people do say things because they want to be heard and they want to make it personal. Like my mom does feel personally offended that we've all decided to be gay, right? And at the same time, she needs to say it for herself so people know her values haven't shifted even though she has kids. It's like a sense of pride in some ways, good and bad, right? Because I know all the secular bubbles, they would be like, wow, parents should change once their kids have changed. But like, that's not how the world works. Even when I have children, my children are probably not going to mesh with my bubble. And that's why they're going to move the fuck out. Like even when I create a bubble that's perfect for me, just like my mom did for her, they're going to give birth to kids that are individuals and my kid is going to be an individual and they're probably not going to like my bubble. 
It doesn't mean my bubble's bad. It just means it's not for them. So that's why we have to encourage our kids to go find their own bubbles. Because I made mine for me. That was me. That was my selfish action. It's for me. So when I had my child, I didn't have them thinking they were me. I had them knowing that they would be themselves. I don't have kids, by the way. I'm just, I'm trying to get into the role here. (laughs) I'm just saying when I have kids, I want them to know they get to be who they want. They live in my bubble for now, barely, because like once they start having a a relationship with their consciousness, I think they start forming their bubbles without realizing it. And they just don't know what to call it. And they think like, I'm just rebelling. Maybe you're just like figuring out what you want and what you need, right? So when you think about your bubble, you have to think about what you need, why you need it, and how you're going to get it. For me, it was about being financially independent and making sure that I lived near people, but still had my own space. So right now, only Mark lives with me, but he'll be leaving. And then I'll be moving to Europe with my partner, which will be great. But even while Mark and I live together and we're siblings and we love each other so much, we have different bubbles. He has a, We spend a lot of time separate from each other. Um, so even then, we, we get along really well as roommates. But we obviously can't be 100% ourselves around each other because there's areas of each other we're not going to be able to see. And it's not to say that we're not close or we're not we don't love each other. It's just to say we respect each other so much that we want that person to find their peace, their joy, their bubble. And I want to find mine without it being personal that we're like rejecting each other or something like that, right? Okay. So I'm looking at my notes. Let me just double check here. One last thing about bubbles that I think is really important. I saw this video recently by Jordan Peterson. What a cringe factory this man is. Philic types. Those are the guys who get sexual kicks from dressing up in women's clothing and then go dr- do drag queen story hour. Say, well, we're just, you know, pristine and pure. It's like, no, you're not. You're getting a sexual kick from dressing up in women's clothing. And let's not bloody well forget it. Become verboten to even suggest such a thing. Oh, there's nothing sexual about this. It's like, yeah, right. You're dressing up in lingerie before your mirror at home, tucking your dick between your legs, imagining you have a vagina for <laughs> sexual kick. Oh, there was nothing sexual about that. Dude, Jordan, you're way too deep into this, bro. And in it, he was he was so just confused about drag queens and so confused about cross-dressing. He just obviously has never visited that bubble or hung out with real drag queens that are lovely and wonderful. But he was just making all these horrible assumptions about drag queens in a really vile way. Like you could hear the disgust in his voice. And when I see a person like that and they have all this paranoia because they're afraid of sex and all these things, it really humbles me and reminds me that, holy shit, I have really bubble hopped. I have grown up so conservative, so anti-sex, so afraid of gays, so this, only to end up in a place at only 33 where I'm so aware of how different bubbles operate, how nudity can be neutral, how families can have nudist events and it's not sexual, how drag queens can be neutral or sexual, how, how in my head, I wouldn't even think that a drag queen could be threatening to my kid if they did a story time, but to other parents, it's like, like pedophilia, basically. And it's interesting, but it is quite human to be in a bubble and to live in that bubble. So one of the perks of creating your own is you really know your heart. You know that you're a good person and you just want to dress up or have some fun. Or maybe you do BDSM. Maybe you have a very strong discipline, maybe a strong belief in in keeping children safe. But because of people viewing you a certain way, they'll never understand it. It's like being gay. In the 80s, there were moments where like being gay, even growing up in my bubble, it basically meant you were a child predator, which is very hard to hear as a young queer person who's so confused about their life, right? Because you're like, that's not me. That's not who I am. But the bubbles are telling you, yes, it is, because they all live in a reality where this is what they think or know versus all of us are having different experiences. So one of the perks of curating your own bubble is knowing who you are and knowing you're a good person. And knowing you're trying your best and knowing that the world might not understand your religion or your beliefs or your pastimes, but you do. And many people in your bubbles or shared bubbles do. And so it's very nice to have a space to come home where you don't feel disgusting for just being a gay person. You know, because the world definitely wants you to feel that way about your differences. And so it's nice to make a bubble where it's not like that. And then, of course, it's nice to visit bubbles that also know that, right? That's why I like going into the BDSM dungeon because I know everyone at the dungeon understands why we're there, understands that I sexually, or I practice non-sexual BDSM. Um, I know that in the privacy of my home, I can become even more intimate with my partner, be more vulnerable with him using this tool of BDSM. But 
Is that going to make sense to everyone else around the world? No. And that's okay, as long as you don't kill or rape or steal from me because of it. As long as I can maintain a living and have a life and I can be left to my own devices, then I think over time we will prove to each other that adults are more than capable, that we can live the lives we want, and that if we were more humble, patient, and kind, we would be less afraid about people making their own bubbles. You know what I mean? All right. I hope that made sense. If there's any questions that you guys had regarding this, please let me know in the comment sections down below. I would love to further this conversation. I definitely want to make a levels video again. I want to talk about bubbles more. Look, we all have different relationships with reality. Literally, when I was listening to Jordan Peterson talk about drag queens, I was just like, bro, I know some drag queens are cringe. I know in some bubbles, some parents let their kids watch The Simpsons, do beauty pageants, and they let their kids like literally like be pretty for older people. I don't know. Some of these bubbles are crazy. Some drag queens twerk with kids. Some people are, are nuts. But I know plenty of conservative drag queens who would never think to twerk in front of children and who are just there to have fun and dress up. And I think that's fine. I'm a big cosplay fan. I like drag queens, drag kings. I like costumes. I like dressing up. I like BDSM. I like things that are fun. And I think there's a way to do certain aspects of these lifestyles that are friendly enough for kids. But I also agree that the kids shouldn't be exposed to things before they're ready. Even myself, even though I love anime, there's a lot of like, I'm going to say like objectification in anime. And I don't want my kids growing up watching that, thinking that it's okay to objectify people like this, right? Um, I want them to know that when you watch it as an adult, it's more humorous and jokey, but you shouldn't do these things in real life unless you get people's consent, right? So even with my favorite thing like anime, I wouldn't want my kids to watch certain kinds of anime until they were older so they can understand the context. It's, you know, from music to TV shows to even religion, there are just certain things that aren't good for kids at a young age. And I think that for myself, I just want to expose my kids to the opportunities of knowing all these bubbles exist. You can be a part of any which one you want or make your own. But the world does for some reason, even though we're all strangers, we have these things that bring us together, like cosplay. All people around the world do cosplay. Why? I don't know. It's just fun to dress up, I guess. <laughs> but either way, are there people who don't understand anime and think it's like crazy? Yes. I have met families who literally don't let their kids watch anime because it's demonic. I've met families that don't let their kids watch Disney or Harry Potter because it's demonic. That's fine. You do you. Right? Right? But that is a bubble. That is a belief system that they think is right and they feel like they cannot let their kids be exposed to that for the safety of their children's sanity, which I commend them as parents for wanting to protect their kids. But obviously, I think you and I would both agree that that's definitely not a bubble we probably belong to. Maybe we were raised in it and maybe my maybe I don't know my audience, but I'm pretty sure all of us would be pretty chill with our kids watching Harry Potter or Disney. But some people out here not like that. And again, instead of thinking, well, they're the freaks, we're all the freaks to someone, right? So when you make your bubble, make sure it's the one space where maybe you feel a little bit less like the freak, unless you want to feel like a freak. Nah, see, that it's a catch-22. It's a catch-22. All right, guys, I hope you have a great day. Please leave your comments in the sections down below, and I'll make a follow-up on this if you guys have more questions. Okay, I think that's it. Looking at my notes. Yeah, I think that's it. Ooh, I hope I answered your questions. I hope this made sense. Okay, talk to you guys soon. Bye. Hello, ladies and dudes. Today I want to talk about decorating your life. And I don't mean decorating your room, though that does have something to do with this video. I was contemplating this. The other day I was examining some art, and I thought to myself, I would love to live in that room. I would love to have this painting so I could examine this room, reflect upon this room, and imagine myself in it. And I realized I had spent so much time and money and effort into buying art or pictures or saving pictures online that represented what I wanted without ever investing in what I wanted. And so with this new room, this new place, I've decided to invest in things that would contribute to the room and the decoration to create what I want. You know, throughout life we sometimes do that a lot. A lot. We read books that, you know, have characters that live the life we want but we never bother doing it ourselves and for some of us it's because we're afraid to live the lives we want and so we live it through other characters. Some of us live it through our friends or family and I just decided I'm not going to do that anymore. So instead of investing in art that represents the room I want, I'm going to create the room I want in the room I live in. I to share that idea with you because for some reason it actually made a difference in my life. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. Uh -huh.
my head and will I fall in bed my belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine yet all I do is whine not to you in my mind cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed so why's my life a mess please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool. Dun, dun, dun.